Good morning, good morning, good morning again. Even though we all know it's not morning, I'm front-loading. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we get going, the usual disclaimers. First off, kind of warning. Paul's in there. His mom gave him a giant chicken. He's going to cook us some giant chicken. So you're going to hear him rumbling around in the kitchen, and you might hear his commentary. Right, Paul? I don't know. Maybe. All right. In the description box, you're going to find the link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It is written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's quote-unquote behavioral modification program. JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much. They have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused, so please share that article on all your social media to spite them. You'll also find Neuroclastic's public statement in regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding in case the JRC actually has the balls to see through with their threat. We got the pertinent links to Agape Boarding School as well. Agape Boarding School is a Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri, that takes in so-called troubled male teens that has and pending over 21 substantiated by the Department of Social Services claims allegations and civil lawsuits leveled against it. These claims include sodomy, rape, sexual assault, child abuse, emotional and psychological abuse, child trafficking, and starvation. You have one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another, a doctor still on the premises with access on the boys facing jail time as of right now. Due to claims substantiated by the Department of Social Services that include rape, sodomy, and sexual assault of the boys there. You got an attorney general who is literally the epitome of do nothing. And a governor hyped up on a power trip. So please share all your articles on all the social medias. And don't forget to sign and share the change.org should have got a boarding school down petition. You got the pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, the templates, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org, shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition, gender misambas, behavioral sheep over shockable offenses, and a clip of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins in 2002 for the high crime of refusing to remove his coat. Folks, when we discuss the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of peoples with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones. This channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity and talk about dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger, parental supervision is advised. Trigger warning, we are about to descend into the mad ravings of a lunatic mind known as Dr. Matthew Israel. You're going to see gaslighting, victim blaming, abuse, apologensia, ableism, and lie after lie after motherfucking lie. So you just be prepared for that. It's 2.08 in the afternoon. This is video number fucking seven. So if I stumble over my words, apologies in advance, all right? Okay, so let's go where we left off last time. Behavioral treatment, that includes the skin shock, is very effective. Oh, for fuck's sake, here we go again. However, it is drawn fire from certain advocates. Gee, I fucking wonder why. Okay, let's talk about this for a minute. You're right, doctor. Fear is effective. Fear also gets an immediate response. Pain also gets an immediate response. But is it a lasting response? No. The only thing that's lasting is the lingering PTSD and self-loathing. Thanks for that. Fear is effective only as long as the fear lingers. You can push somebody by being so horrific to them beyond the point of fear. 
The point of beyond fear is what we call an individual with nothing to lose. We call those people the most dangerous individuals on the earth. They have zero fucks left to give. Fear only works as long as it's still effective. It is not a solution because it's never long lasting. When that threat is removed, guess what happens? All that shit that was never dealt with properly, it comes out. And now you got psychological trauma on top of it. You want to know how to make self-injurious behavior and meltdowns worse? Traumatizing's an autistic. Okay? Myself, point blank. Most females with autism are more known to have more emotional responses as opposed to physical. Not my ass. I have trauma on top of it. So my meltdowns are incredibly violent. Because I have PTSD and horrific memories that can play themselves in my head with remarkable realism. That will make that meltdown a thousand times worse than it ever was previously. You see where I'm going with, don't you? Yes, fear is very effective. Torture can be very effective, but it's not long lasting. It's not a real solution. Also, what do we know about torture? We know that a person will confess or act or do anything that you ask them to under threat of torture or during torture. When they're not being tortured, they're going to act as they always had previously. It's not rocket science, folks. It's not hard to figure out. The reason why torture cannot be used as fucking medical treatment should be clear as goddamn day. First of all, unethical as fuck. Unethical as fuck. Ever hear do no harm? Just saying. Just saying is all. Not to mention we know for a fact that these solutions are not real solutions. Because the underlying problem that's causing the behavior is not being dealt with. Because you're treating a neurological disability as a mental health issue. And then you're using insane torture devices on people who are already having mental health issues. And then you're telling me deliberately triggering these people is a good idea. Uh, why don't you fuckers find me a Vietnam vet? I want you to set, do, deliberately trigger him. And when he's done fucking dismembering you, I want you to tell me how this all was a good idea and great treatment. Okay? Again, I like to hit you all with reality, not magical thinking. The reason why it's drawn fire is because we're intelligent people. No one knows autism better than those of us who fucking have it. If we tell you something doesn't work, we're not talking out of our ass. We're talking from lived goddamn experience. Their doctor's degrees will never match the knowledge and wisdom that comes from living with it. Okay? Their book knowledge does not beat real experience. Okay? And even if they want to use that argument, I can use it too. Because I work the field. Okay? Many of these pe persons believe that anything unpleasant should never be used when educating or caring for children. Oh, for fuck's sake, doctor. Really? What a childish argument. What an absolutely childish five-year-old argument. Nobody's saying that, doctor. All of us are quite aware, especially us adults, 
that the world is not fair, it's not built for us, and matter of fact, people are probably going to target us for the entirety of our lives. We're aware shit's not fair. We live in a world not built for us. We are perfectly fucking aware. Here's the thing. What he calls merely unpleasant, he's using infantilizing words, if you notice. Because that's what they think of us. Torture is more than just simply unpleasant, doctor. It's torture. Okay? Hearing someone scream and beg for their lives for the sin of being born not fucking neurotypical is not just simply unpleasant. Want to know what's unpleasant? Ramming my elbow into a table and hitting the funny bone. That's unpleasant. When I have church perch on my shoulders and decide to skid down using her nails down my back, that's unpleasant. Torturing children goes way beyond unpleasant. And to say, but but it's educating and caring for children. If that's what you call caring for children, fuck it, I'm out. I will, I'll take the bullet. I'll take the fucking bullet because I'd rather be shot and die than set foot in that place. Particularly children with mental and behavioral disabilities. See, this is where they like to infantilize. You don't understand. You're not like these kids. You don't know how hard it is. Fucker, I live with it. Really? No, I may not be like all the kids in that school, but I am way more like them than any of you fuckers will ever be. Okay? Let's start there. Number two, to sit there and tell us all, you don't understand. Fucker, I have eyeballs. I know torture when I see it. When someone who is not harming fucking anyone is incapacitated on a four-point board, face down, with a helmet on, screaming for fucking mercy. Don't tell me I don't understand what I'm seeing there. Okay? Do not insult my intelligence. Let's talk about all of us autistics who worked the field. You're going to tell us we don't understand? If we don't understand, how the fuck did we get into the field in the first place. Seems to me we understand a lot. Okay? Please stop with the infidelizing bullshit. It's an insult. But, but you, but nothing else works. And we're the only thing that they've got. And you just don't understand that, 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 that. shut up. Shut the fuck up, doctor. I not only have the diagnosis and the lived experience and have had these types of behaviors myself, I've worked the fucking field, doctor, to sit there and say with your whole goddamn chest that nobody ever in all the fucking world is like the kids in your school is complete bullshit. The numbers do not work. There are billions of people on this planet. There are probably billions with neurodiverse and mental health disabilities. You're really going to tell me that these kids are the only ones in all the planet this severe? You're going to tell me with your whole fucking chest, me who actually had to work for a quarter of my fucking state, 25% of our population who had disabilities. 25 fucking percent. Do you have any idea how big of a state Missouri is? It dwarfs Massachusetts. By a lot. 
You're going to tell me in all that 25% in my state that I have never worked with an individual with the same types of disorders and problems you're describing? Come on now. Come on. Not only that, doctor, but I lived with that individual. I know from personal experience. So don't insult me there either. Okay? There are other solutions other than torturing fucking kids. Now let's go here. Although such persons accept many types of aversives, see item six at section B above, and oppose only certain aversives as skin shock, they can come to be referred to as anti-adversive advocates, and that is how they will be referred to in this document. Oh, so you're going to pigeonhole us even though we're all pit ready pigeonholed. Got it. Got it. And that, where is this? You've only come against certain adversives. Sir, I have come against every single fucking adversive. Matter of fact, I've come up against every single element in your freak show, psychotic acid trip from hell of a school. I have come for your behavioral rehearsal lessons. I have come from your food contingency program. I have come for your GED. I have come against your educational ideas. I have literally come against every single adversive bullshit thing you do in that school. So has Neuroclastic. So has ASAN. So has ARC. So has Easter Seals. So has MDRI. Should I go fucking on? Because I've got a list. Okay? That is a lie. So spare me the bullshit. Similarly, though the term aversive means any consequence that decreases a frequency of the behavior, the term is used by anti-aversive advocates to refer only to a small subclass of aversives such as skin shacks, packs, or water sprays to the cheek. Bullshit! That's a lie. Do you know what the meaning of the term adversive means, doctor? Obviously you don't. What they mean by adversives is punishment. And doctor, you have made that more than fucking clear. Okay? But there's adversives and be positive behavioral reinforcement. No, there's not. Nobody is punished in positive behavioral reinforcement for existing, okay? But, but isn't some of the stuff in life adverses? Sure. None of them are utilized against me in regards to treat my autism, however. Excuse me. You see where I'm going with, with this, don't you? He wants you to believe that we have no idea what the fuck we talking about. That we have no expertise and we shouldn't be listened to any, by anyone. And he tried to tie it in a bow with that particular lie, right? Well, you failed, doctor. Because everything you just said there is bullshit. Many of us have worked the field. Many of us, as soon as we became diagnosed, did everything we could to become an expert on the subject. We have, in fact, studied more Yale studies, data, research papers, psychology, psychology magazines, basically swallowed the DSM and been able to regurgitate it like we were getting ready to recite a fucking Shakespearean soliloquy. Yeah. Yeah, folks. Many of us are lecturers on the subject, myself included, no rebel included. There's a few of us included in that. Yeah. And it's only certain subclass of adversives. You mean the subclass that, you know, punishes us for existing? We're talking about the subclass that killed six of your previous students. That was before the shock device was added on. 
You mean those? You know what water spraying is? Sounds like you, you just get a spray to the face. No, water spraying is they put a thin piece of cloth over your head, hold you back, immobilize you, and shoot you with water in the face. Gee, I wonder what could possibly go wrong. That's not water sprays to the cheek, doctor. That's a fucking lie. I'm going to close out on this. You don't get very many views on this channel, especially on this subject. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time. As always, we hope you have a good one. I'm going to finish up with a video on agape after this. Bye-bye, everyone.